Hello, good afternoon. How are you going? Hope you're doing well. Fantastic. This is day eight around the topic of prayer and fasting. Uh, coming to you back from Planet Shakers Conference. Now we are back in Placid Hills, which is just a great place to be. And just give me a moment while I try to share the broadcast. We might, um, we may have my wife on. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Oh, yes, it's positive. <laughs> You're in the room. We're live now, Lou. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. This is day eight. Slow connection. Give me a break. What am I paying? Uh, what am I paying you guys for? Anyway, not you guys. That's not aimed at you. Clearly. <laughs> anyway, this is day eight prayer and fasting. I really feel as though we hit our breakthrough uh, both a few days ago and even yesterday and then today. Um, that's very distracting. And it's just. Just flick it down. Okay. But I really feel like we, we hit our breakthrough. And um, there's a bit of music for it. <laughs> and praise God. So I, I was believing for a few things specifically and really felt like, yes, got it. Got it. So, hey, we, we will still, I am still committed to your broadcasts, to these broadcasts for the next six days is that right yeah give us a shout out if you're watching let us know where you're watching from comments will appear here but i can't see any yet that's right for the next six days so happy to join you at 5 30 talking around the topic of prayer and fasting and mm, yes indeed it was good to mm. it was good to <laughs> hit a point of breakthrough this morning was awesome I think, I believe, God moved, it was wonderful. But this is the daily dose of encouragement from God's word. You know, so Nehemiah chapter 1 says this, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, It came to pass in the month of Chislev in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, this, the citadel, bear with me, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors are left from the captivity in the province, are in very great distress and reproach. The, walls, the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. Not a great report. Verse 4, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Prayer and fasting many times is done after mourning mm. or as an, ex well, not as an expression. I don't know. Maybe perhaps you could go that far. Oh, like when something bad happens, you know, like... Mordecai tore his clothes, sackcloth, and he's prayer and fasting. He's in a time of mourning as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the one you were talking, yeah, Nehemiah, that's right. They don't eat when they're sad. Yeah, and you might have experienced advocating that. for that. Hands up emoji if you haven't felt like eating when you're very... It does take your appetite away. Yeah, it, it really can. But it's really interesting, can. like when they were like perturbed about something or upset about something... They would go to a time of prayer and fasting, like when there was a crisis, like that um, army coming at those people. They're like, "Okay, let's." I'm decreeing a fast. It's like the emergency button. Yes. Um, bad thing. Ah, fast. Yes. And just like, it's so strange. Yeah, this must be to quickly clear the airways. We need an answer from God. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it can be a good thing if you're directing it in the right direction you know, to find the pathway, to find what to do from here, to find peace again. Yeah. And it was in Nehemiah's case because through prayer and fasting these many days, 
it actually opened the door, I believe, for a burdening process to happen to Nehemiah, whereby God would put weight on his heart of the gravity of the situation. He mourned, prayed, and there was a burdening happening to Nehemiah at this point. And the account goes on and Nehemiah gets incredible favor with his king that he went into the king's presence sad, which you're not supposed to do. You can die from that. And he was concerned, probably. I imagine he would have been. But he got incredible favor. Mm. I wonder, would that favor ha had existed had he just gone yeah. in his own strength? Probably not. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think that the favor that the king showed him was in part due to his prayer and fasting right. and the Lord burdening his heart so that when he shared what was happening with the king, the king said, all right, I'll let you go to Jerusalem and rebuild. That's outrageous. Rebuild. In fact, That's just tell me how long will your journey yeah. be? And let me know when you want me to resign. You yeah. Know, yeah. Know, I'll fine. just hand it yeah. all no over problem. to you because, no you know, Peyton you are king. Uh, rival kingdom. So. And, and then Nehemiah says, uh, well, all the best. We, we also are going to need a heap of lumber. Hey, Luke, we're going to need a heap of wood. So, and the, and the, keep, oh, yeah, I'll give you that the keeper of the king's forest, he had a letter from the king to go to the keeper of the king's forest so that he could get all these resources. All of these things began falling into place. But at the very start of Nehemiah's journey, right there, is prayer and fasting. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. At the very start of his journey. Come not, on now. Not coincidental, I should say. Oh, well, perhaps it was. So, Billy Ann Kennedy, wow, hello. What a blessing you are. How amazing. Facebook is a, an incredible place. It's true. Wow, so Acts 9. Yeah. Because I can't remember exactly what I entitled this. Or I don't think it was very descriptive. But praying at the beginning of the journey, at the launch... Praying and fasting to launch. Have a look at what happened to Saul. Saul, when he became Paul, is that, uh, where does it say? Verse 6, when he saw this incredible, he, okay, maybe I'll just go from verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground. You're right, you can go. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise, go into the city and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeying with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Dam Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. What's it called when you don't eat? In the comments, anybody? <laughs> because there are those that don't believe that Paul fasted. But just, you know, fun quiz. What's it called? In the Bible, when you don't eat. <laughs> Anyone? I think I can see a comment there. Who will be the first? I oh, know, it just says, Trevor is watching. Thank you for watching, Trevor. God bless you. Okay, I've waited long enough. No one got it. No one wins the prize. It's called fasting. Prayer and fasting. Saul went into a time where he had just... And, you know, when you think about it, Saul had been expending so much effort in trying to eradicate this heresy. Fasting Luke God's 100%. Well done. Even though it was after, but pretty good. You might have even typed it. I don't know if this how live this actually is. Anyway, after he realized, I have been working against the Lord all of this time, all of my efforts, all of my zeal, all of my attempts 
to try to correct this heresy and this problem that's happening. All of that was actually working directly against what the Lord wanted me to do. He persecuted, you know, the church of God. He says later, Paul says that I'm the chief of sinners, the worst of sinners. And why do you think he might have felt that way? I believe that a big part of it was because when he had the encounter with Jesus, he realized, I have been actively working to destroy everything God has trying to be doing. And that is a sobering time of mourning and fasting. You say, oh, well, he was blind too. Yeah, maybe. Was he just blind so he couldn't find any food or water? I doubt it. They led him by the hand. Seriously? You're going to take that line? No, I don't think so. I think it was a time where he was in major reflection, major, oh my goodness, where to from here? And then he was spent some time and went, Giles Birchley, hello, well done. Thank you for watching. Awesome. Then Paul later on, because I'm talking about the themes of, so this is when, this is when Saul had an encounter with God and, and God hit him so hard, knocked the S off his name, put a P there, Dr. Rodney R. Brown says, which is funny. But it's um, well done, <laughs> absolutely. I'm out of TGS now. I don't work in boarding. Did you know that? That's a fact. Anyway, in Acts 13, it says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. So, you see it there. You see that at the launch, at the very beginning of the, that aspect of their ministry, there was prayer and fasting associated with it. And then later, so good, later on, it says in 14 verse 23, well, you know, I think that's enough, actually, three instances of the launching of something new that it's done with prayer and fasting. So if you're considering launching something new, starting a business, starting whatever, I think it's a great time to engage in prayer and fasting. If you have a sobering wake up call in your life and you're in a time of mourning and oh my goodness, recalibrating the GPS of life, it is a great time to engage in prayer and fasting at that point. You don't have to go for 40 days at that juncture, you know, maybe. And I think with Louise and myself, we were really fasting and looking for a few things, looking for a few things regarding direction and church and just, and then we felt like, boom, it came. We, we got the breakthrough. So we are not doing full fasting anymore. And so we'll partially break and then we may do some days that are six till six so fasting until sundown or about six o'clock at night or 7 a.m you know seven till seven i think yeah uh, it just depends on how early we rise and all of this kind of thing in our schedule but you know it is a great thing to do fasting and prayer at the launch of something new so and that's why it's so good to do it at the launch of a new year so many changes happen at the beginning of the year. People reconsider all of their, where they work, where they're going to church, where their children are going to school, like for the new year. So it's such a good time to just consecrate yourself, set yourself apart to God and make sure that you're just right where he wants you to be. Awesome. Well, it's so good. How good. If you're watching and you don't know, if you were to die today and you don't know where you would spend eternity, then I want to 
help you with that because you can actually know and you can come to the place where you can build a relationship with God so that all doubt about where you're going to spend eternity is gone. And it's, it's an important thing. We should spend some time thinking about where we're going to spend eternity. So if you don't know, I want you to just pray this prayer with me. I'll give you the words to say. You say it out of your mouth and believe it with your heart. The Bible says that if you confess that Jesus is Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so salvation is that simple. So say this right now. Dear God, if you sent Jesus for me, I want to say thank you and receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe in your heart that Jesus died for you and you've just said that out loud, then he takes you at your word. When you mean business with God, he means business with you. So I encourage you to send us a message because that can just be the very beginning of a relationship with God that really, that's the first seed part of your relationship with God is when you actually come to him with your heart and you mean it. And you start speaking to him. And there's something about speaking out loud as well that we should do. We should do. It can't just all be inward thoughts. And I believe that the Lord's going to come and help you help those concerns evaporate. So let me pray for you now. Father, thank you for everybody watching. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for anyone that just prayed that and meant that. I pray that you would give them an assurance of salvation. Thank you for dying for us 2,000 years ago on that cross, taking our sins upon yourself and giving us an assurance, even with what your word says and even by the presence of the Holy Spirit who guarantees what is to come. Hallelujah. Bless everybody watching. Help them during this time of January where they're praying and fasting to try to find direction. Let divine guidance and direction come to them at the launch of everything new that they're doing this year. In Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody said, Amen. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. Well, very good. I will see you tomorrow at 5.30, again, if you don't, um, if you don't, if you're anywhere in the Toowoomba area and you would like to, you would like to come to church on Sunday, come to a good church on Sunday, which is what I want to do. I want to go to a good church on Sunday, actually, um, which I'm delighted that I enjoy coming to church. So... <laughs> I can vouch for Breakthrough Center. If you don't have a church and you're a believer in Toowoomba, then come. Come. 15 Blake Street, Wilsonton, and that would be awesome. Also, if you want to give financially towards Breakthrough Center, the church website is now in the comments. You can just follow the links to give now, and you'll be able to give to what the Lord's doing in Breakthrough Center. That'd be awesome. If these broadcasts have blessed you, then, you know, it's a good thing to give. Awesome. All right. Well, I will see you tomorrow at 5.30. God bless you. See ya.